All right, guys, we're back staring at my engine bay. And in this video, we are going to talk about Vanos and how it works on the V58 engine. This is something that BMW has been using for a really long time, literally since 1992. So over 30 years of development has gone into what our current state is today in the V58. And I think this system is really cool in how it works. A lot of companies have different methods of how they try to address this, but Vanos is just the one that BMW came up with. So I'm going to explain the different components, how they come together, and how the Vanos system works. And hopefully you guys find this information useful in case you ever are, you know, investigating how your Vanos system is. Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. So Vanos is BMW's version of variable valve timing. And again, every company has some version of it. A lot of people like to say, oh, this is so-and-so's version of VTEC. And VTEC is its own kind of complex system of its own. But for variable valve timing, it's just another method of trying to control how efficient your engine is, regardless of the cam profile. So if you see these cams, they've got a lot of specific dimensions set to them. And usually what those dimensions are set up for is a specific rev range and a specific driving style so you'll get a certain amount of efficiency a certain amount of power and all of that is what it is now if you add a way to control and vary your valve timing now you can create a wider power band you can create a car that gets better emissions or it makes more power with the same amount of fuel economy so it's really just a win-win all around but of course it does add additional complexity to your system so let's go ahead and talk about the different components. So everything is controlled back here at the back of the cylinder head. And what you can't see is that these big cam gears are actually completely separate pieces from the camshaft itself. So these cam gears that you see are the actual Vanos control units. And that's what varies the timing of your cams relative to your crank and basically and effectively controls your valve timing. Now, as you can see, you basically have the same Vanos control unit on the intake and the exhaust. So both cams can be controlled with the Vanos system. You've got this actuator at the back of your head, and this is plugged into the cam. And right in here, you've got this little piston that can push in and out. And this is basically the way that BMW controls how your valve timing works. So inside of the cam, you can't see it here, and I really don't want to take my car apart that much to show you mine, but I'll show an image of how it actually works. There's basically a small valve in the front end of the cam, and that has little holes in it. And those holes are basically a restriction. And depending on how much restriction you have going through those holes, as it flows through the cylinder head, through the cam, and through that valve, it basically controls the position of your cam relative to the cam gear. Now, if you've got constant flow through there, it's going to keep it in the same position. But if you increase or decrease the restriction, then it can basically advance or retard your cam relative to the cam gear at the back. So it's very similar to how your ignition timing works. You know, you're trying to measure how far before top dead center your spark plug fires and that creates, you know, how much efficiency your engine is going to run with. In this sense, you're basically looking at the cam and in this exact same position, is it going to retard a little bit or advance a little bit and kind of control that rotation against everything else. Now, the cool thing about our car, like I said, everything is built into the cam. So in a lot of older engines, you had multiple electronic units that were separate from each other and individually controlled oil flow to the camshafts. Now with everything in one compact unit, you basically have that electronic actuator and you have that mechanical solenoid or central valve inside of the cam. And that's what it replaces. If you guys are used to older engines where you had the Vano solenoids, that's what's inside of the cam. Now it's just called a central valve. 
having this kind of compact design reduces how many oil ducts you need in the cylinder head. So oil is used more efficiently. It goes through less stress. And again, it's a part of the reason why oil is able to last longer in these modern engines. And it also makes the Vano system more efficient. So you don't need as much oil pressure, or as much oil to properly control your valve timing. Now the DME controls and determines your valve timing based on a lot of different inputs, primarily your engine speed and your load. So your engine speed, of course, are your RPM. So if you're at 2000 RPMs, your valve timing will be different than if you're at 5000 RPMs. And then your load is basically how hard you're pushing your engine. So if you're at idle or cruise, you're going to have different valve timing settings than you would if you're flooring it and trying to accelerate really quickly. For example, when you start your car, it does help heat up the cat quicker. They basically optimize the overlap between the valves on the intake and exhaust side so that you're getting as much hot air out of the car as possible. This also helps reduce fuel consumption in general. So optimizing that overlap really gives you the most efficiency. However, when you're going, you know, full load, trying to accelerate quickly and pushing the car, it actually goes in the opposite direction and it keeps the exhaust valves closed for longer. So you have more time to complete the combustion process and create as much power as possible. So again, this is a part of the reason why we're able to have a relatively efficient engine that also can produce a lot of power. All of these things are being modified in the background depending on your driving conditions and driving style to give you the best of both worlds. Another really cool thing that we've talked about in the past is this is the reason why we're able to remove the diverter valve or blow up valve from our turbocharged engines. So they basically control, again, the exhaust overlap to allow the extra gases to flow through the engine and out the exhaust without needing something to bleed it off and vent it to atmosphere or recirculate it somewhere else. This helps give us really good response when we come on and off throttle. We're able to get back into boost really quickly and just overall it gives the car a lot more pep while still running efficiently and having less components that you know can potentially fail. Now the Vano system also has a constant feedback loop. So while the car is trying to control how much oil is going through those central valves to determine what your valve timing should be, it also needs to actually read off of your cam. So it's going to read off of your cam position sensors. This is where the exhaust sensor reads off of. It has this secondary wheel and the only purpose is to give a reading. And then the same thing up here. This is your secondary wheel that the intake cam sensor reads off of. So anytime the car tries to adjust your valve timing, it's reading off of those cam gears and trying to determine that it's actually hitting the targets it expects. Now those intake cam sensors can read cam speed, cam position, and adjustment speed. So if any of those are outside of the expected targets, it'll typically throw a fault and tell you that something's wrong because it knows that it's not responding the way that it should. Either it's not accurately responding or not responding quick enough to where it's not giving you the performance and efficiency benefits you should be seeing. Also, I've heard of a lot of people having, you know, small idle issues like the car stumbling a little bit. And a lot of times that can be caused by a bad Venus actuator as well. The good news is both of those components on the back of the car are the exact same part number. So you can switch it from the intake to the exhaust or vice versa. And if you're having an intake code or an exhaust code and you see it move, then you know it's your actuator. If it doesn't move, then you know that it's something actually built into the cam itself. Now, unfortunately, in order to remove that central valve, you actually need to lock down the cams because, like I said, the Vano's control unit is not one piece with the cams. So if you're going to remove any of that, you have to lock all your timing down, lock your cams down, remove the whole, you know, assembly at the back of the motor. And it's a lot more work than the Venos actuators that just kind of clip into the valve cover. So it's good to at least check that and verify it's not your actuator before you dig in and get this far into, you know, trying to maintain your car. So, yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything related to the Venos. Hopefully this gave you guys a little bit more information than you knew before. I just kind of wanted to take the time to show you everything since I can visually see it with the cylinder head off. And yeah, hopefully this just gives you a little bit of insight on how things work and why things are as complicated as they are. You know, even though this doesn't have to be here, this is part of the reason why the B58 is such a potent engine 
And I definitely think that over time, it's going to continue to evolve. We're already seeing the new electronic Veno systems that are going to be used in the next TU version of the B-58. So really excited to see where this goes and how they're able to take advantage of that with future vehicles. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.